Welcome everyone to Escape Route Chat. Um, today is a very exciting day. We're gonna be chatting with Roman Hagenauer and Jamal Otman, um, both part of the ICE Academy of Montreal. Coaches, choreographers from uh, Olympic champions, uh, world champions, like a huge team of ICE dancers uh, in Montreal and yeah. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things, very interesting, and about their own experiences, of course. So I'm gonna see they're around here to, to have them in. Um, don't forget to click the button of the questions if you wanna ask something that we can respond at the end, of course. So I can see you guys here already. <clears throat> connecting hi hello, how, are you? <laughs> how are you good too Very good. first time doing a live chat with a duo <laughs> yeah yeah we are, we are a bit circular together <laughs> he, he has a big shoulder so I'll go. how are you guys doing very good i had uh, i just finished you did yeah, he's naturally tan, and uh, <laughs> we, we have mean, some uh, very good weather in Montreal. A long time so. outside, no? Yeah, but during the confinement, but since uh, since two weeks, uh, the Ice Academy of Montreal reopened, so I'm very busy with new choreography, and I'm very excited to be able oh, to finally start the season. Yeah, you just came back from coaching, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was okay. working with your ex teammate, uh, Adria, uh, Olivia. And Olivia. So it's, a, it's a Spanish day for me. Can you tell us about it or not yet? <laughs> right. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you so much for joining Escape Proud. Um, I'm so excited to have you here, of course, as coaches and part of the Ice Academy of Montreal, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, and the best places in the world for ice dancing that like you have cha world champions, Olympic champions, like how many teams do you have right now at the moment active? Uh, at the moment we have a big, uh, normally we have around 20 teams, but we're a big, uh, a big group of coaches, of course, with uh, Patrice and Marie France, but Jose, Pascal and all the other um, coaches, uh, like ballet, ballroom, everything. But uh, for now, we have um, our uh, two Chinese team went back to China at the beginning of the con confinement. And uh, so they are in China still, the Japanese too. And uh, so we are around 16 teams right now uh, who are able to train. Of course, because of the COVID, some people maybe with visas and all that stuff needed to get back. And yeah, yeah it's a complicated situation. Oh, but that's crazy. Like, multiply that for two people. <laughs> it's a lot. And like, yeah, um, how long have you been already in Montreal um, since all this new academy started? Me, me personally, so I'm, I moved in Montreal. Uh, basically, we kind of moved together, but I arrived yes, before yeah. Jamal, a, a year before, 10 months before Jamal, because... Yeah, Whatever, yeah. but it's six months, six years, sorry. Yeah, you arrived here in July 2014, and I got here in uh, April 2015. Yeah. yeah. For six years, uh, and uh, yeah, I've done a lot. Um, we created uh, the Ice Academy of Montreal, and we worked a lot, and Canada. The team has grown a lot. I see much, many more teams of ice dancers, but also coaches and like choreographers or like dance like um also for dance of eyes as well that you have a lot of people working together it's pretty cool yeah yeah so a, a um, big team uh, of great people uh, uh, on eyes and off eyes and most of the most important is that we have a lot of fun uh, working together with the student but also the coaches it's yeah it's a, it's a big a lot of teamwork and I think it's pretty cool, like, as skaters, uh, it's a lot of motivation to be with um, this environment, everyday training, 
it's very competitive, but at the same time, it's cool because you're like training with people. You're gonna compete at the world championships, and it's like basically when you watch the the world championships or the Olympics, it's like you guys are there, one after the other. <laughs> it's like how do you how the question will be like how do you manage to to with the clothing accreditations or all that stuff when you have or how do you organize to to stay for the next skater and still keep with the one that is skating and how how do you get all this yeah, for me it's very simple because uh, yes for, for the accreditation let's say in the village or whatever of course you, i have to every coach has to choose you can have just one accreditation so you have one country or france canada us or whatever, spain or whatever so outside of the ice rink you wear the yeah, create the, the country you, rep you have on um, your uh, accreditation. But anyway, in the ice rink, me, I never wear uh, sports things. So it's my own, uh, uh, my looking own looking uniform with looking. my uh, own <laughs> I'm my, uh, myself, I'm my sponsor for the Olympics. So I don't have to, to switch jacket. Yeah, well, makes sense, yeah. Um, so let's get to the point. You guys, how, when was the, you guys were just recently married, no? Not long time ago. We, we, we had our third wedding anniversary just uh, yeah, two weeks ago mm -hmm. on the 17th of June. So, yeah. That's, uh, three that's three years, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, yeah. So, how... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um... Could you tell us a little bit how was this story? Because of course, Jamal, you you were a figure skater, a competitive figure skater as well. I remember we competed together at some point, uh, and and then how you ended up finding each other and and in this skating world, I guess. <laughs> As I don't like to speak too much about myself, because I will let you know his story, and I keep mine. Okay, okay, I'm gonna tell my story. Well, um, yeah. So as you said, I was a, I was a competitive figure skater representing Switzerland, and I I quit skating in 2010. Um, I went to Asia. I was uh, living and working in Kuala Lumpur. I was teaching there, and um, I mean, we of course we knew each other. I mean, we knew. Who we were as you know in the skating family it's everybody knows everybody yeah. so we were not unknown to each other but i had uh, lived already in malaysia for i think three a bit more than three years when we were speaking on facebook and roman was uh, he came teaching in switzerland and by coincidence i was in switzerland at that time so we just met up for for uh, for lunch and then you know we kind of kept talking and at some point like a few months later i think you you came visiting me in malaysia <laughs> yes, because, because by i, I found it very interesting here. to meet someone in south asia when you have never been there you know it was a good occasion yeah it started and, like, at the time you were still of course living in lyon because mm -hmm. uh, you used to have your eyes and you were based in lyon i remember mm -hmm. yeah um and how it's going to like um the perspective from each of your countries um how will you how do you feel it was um respectively in switzerland versus in france like about being gay and how uh, open and accepting it is or it was and how will you think it has changed from when you were younger until let's this point which it's been a, a lot of uh, advances I would say but how is your each of yours perspective is different I, I was I, I guess for me so as you said uh, so I'm from Lyon which is the second biggest city second third biggest city in France so really uh, from downtown of course as as a skaters from uh, you know from from where I come like it was not I can't tell it was uh, it was very difficult to to become gay or to be uh, older. Yeah. so my I never had any problems but I realized when I moved to Canada which is uh, you already said in, in past interview uh, because I follow you sometimes when I don't work <laughs> good uh, that, uh, <laughs> I, I realized because as French you know 
I think my country and the French are the best. Like, it's well known. But when <laughs> I moved here, I realized like actually it was much, much more how to say accepted, much more common to to see two boys or two girls uh, being in I don't know in the in the street uh, hand in hand or in a in a shop, if you, I don't know, if you call the phone uh, center for a problem and you say, my husband, my boyfriend, or it's you feel like if you say that like, uh, the sun is shining, you know, here. And in France, when I moved last like, six years ago, it's not at that point. So I never had problem, but I can see there is a lot to do. And when I moved uh, to Canada, uh, the, it was uh, still not allowed to, the, the, to, to get married as a gay, gay people. They did that maybe five years ago, five, six years ago. So, yeah, yeah. I think um, there and is... And how, uh, how is this, uh, it may be a bit different in Switzerland. I don't know how forward you guys are in your country. I know recently it's been better, but it's been very recent that you guys approved... Um, yeah, yes. Basically, the, the, I, I guess the law has passed just now. It was during quarantine. It was a few weeks ago. Um, so we will probably be able to, well, same-sex marriage will be possible starting next year. So not yeah, just common law, but marriage as well. Marriage. Mm -hmm. common, law, common law we had, we had for, a, for a while already. Okay. But yeah, I'm a, I mean, I like my country very much too. I think Switzerland is great. But, it is beautiful, yeah. But I have to admit that especially when it comes to when it comes to you know social change and things like this, I know that Switzerland is not a leading country. We uh, I know that you know even the women's uh, voting rights are pretty young in Switzerland, pretty recent, which I'm not mm -hmm. of at all. Um, and yeah, same same with same sex marriage. Um, I have to say, I, I never had a problem either. I was very lucky to be, you know, to have grown up and, and lived my life in an environment of, of very understanding, very open, very forward people. I never had a problem. Thinking back, you know, in the end, you know, things happen in school. Um, I don't know. I, I, at some point, I was like, randomly hitting my face in a club in Switzerland. At the time, I would never think I would in never like think a, it could be in a club partying or going out. Just yes, exactly. Because of like homophobia. I don't know. I know or, this happens a lot. It? Recently, I, I, I read, I, I still follow, of course, what's going on in Switzerland. And it, it does still happen a lot. Like, you yeah. know, random kickings, basically, based on, on homophobia, which is which is very sad, which is, yeah. which is you know, cool. Um, um, so yeah, I, I hope that now that the law has changed, it, Switzerland will also- It helps, it said, helps. Moving, I mean, moving to, to Canada really, really opens your eyes, you know, especially, I was actually moving straight from Singapore and, and yeah, where, where being gay is illegal, you know. Yeah. So um, it really, like, it, it really changed, it, yeah, it, it did change my life in a way, um, to the point where now I guess we go we go back to Europe or we go to Asia for a holiday and we you know we would like walk around like this and then all of a sudden we realize oh okay it's it's people you, people don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you 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 it's it's true of course, but it's just it's not like I don't want to exaggerate, but you in you in Europe in France Swiss and. You, you have to be careful. Like, it's not something you can't live, personally, like, you can live your life, but you have to see where you are, uh, who is around you to do. You know, it's something you, 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 it's not so much a problem, but when you can, when you are totally free, you realize that it's finally, it's not as comfort, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure too, uh, maybe Canada, there is a uh, a lot to do still. Uh, we, we don't say that it's perfect, but it's, we, we notice the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I, I feel the same. We also, when I was talking with Guillaume, the same, because he also is in Montreal. And I think, yeah, it's going out of your own country 
and then it's very accepting Canada. Um, I think Canada and Spain have had these advances kind of similar. So we were very early as well. Spain is very good, I would say. Um, but still, as you said, maybe there's some people that is that go and attack to guys because they're holding hands randomly. And even though we have now the law that protects us, or you can call the police and they have like a special department, blah, blah, blah. But it's, um, it still happens. But but I, yeah, in terms of living, I feel coming to Canada has given us all a different perspective and feeling more comfortable, I, I will say. Um, and how how was the, um, when you were like growing up, um, I've been like asking a, a little bit about choosing figure skating, which is the opposite of what the standard uh, and the society will choose, right? Like people will go and play football in Europe or hockey in North America. And I guess uh, coming from your countries, I don't know if that made a difference. Maybe Switzerland is a smaller country. I don't know if that affects in a different way because you are also more a winter country. Uh, but of course you're choosing an artistic sport and we in the end, beside athletes, we are artists. And I think that also maybe if you probably growing up had some situations where you had some discrimination or bullying and I don't know, how did you leave that period? If you could share that. I start. Me, honest, to be really honest, I never have had, have had this problem. It's true that, you know, when you are at school, you... At school, yeah. be, uh, Between kids, you always look for the difference. Me, I just remember I was a skater. I, I, maybe it's me. Uh, I, I see the more the positive. Or I didn't care, finally, but I never noticed anything. But yes, I was a skater, and me, I have... Uh, no, I, I never had any problem. It was more me. I wanted to be like every student I, because people said, okay, the skater and uh, is different. You know, you always want to be in normal, by the way, but it was not because of uh, a sport for a girl. I, I never had this problem and basically I didn't care if it was. I, yeah. I, I, I received more positive. If you listen to the positive thing, it's all, all, always how you see and uh, the comfort you you have with yourself. Of course, I think if you are comfortable and you have to be because today there is. I mean, there's a lot of problem with that. Stories. Yeah, and it, it it depends also your family is where supportive they wanted you to skate or it was difficult because they didn't really want you to skate because it's, it's girls' sport. You know what I mean? I don't know. That changed a lot if you have the your family support. You know. True. True. Me, but. As I told you, I don't want to talk too much personal, but I, yeah. I came out quite late. So I was like late, I mean, after 20, just, around 20s. So it's not, I was not that young. So I was already working as a coach, you know, so I was kind in, of independent. So yes, I had the support, but you know, I, I can't by, really tell. Just yeah. by choosing, by just when you're a kid, choosing figure skating, some parents, they don't want that. You know, or like ballet, or you know, because of his sports for girls. So it also changed a lot the story. You know, I don't know your case, Jamal, as well. If they were supportive for it, your sport when you were a kid. Yes, yes, my entire family. I have I have three older brothers, so I'm uh, oh, the, I'm wow. the four. They, of course, you know, when I first when I went to to an ice rink for the first time, uh, they all got the hockey skates, and I at the age of like five said, no, I want the other ones. <laughs> you know, that was very like, that's for me, there was no question. Um, uh, as, as Roman said also, like me, I never had, I feel like I never had a problem. Of course, there are maybe a lot of things that happened, you know, that I just, you know, selective memory. I mean, I do remember, I started to skate uh, uh, at the age of six in Bern. Bern uh, has one of the, used to have, or still has one of the biggest hockey clubs in the world, uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and I was for a very long time the only boy who was uh, figure skating in the club. So of course I had, you know, when I would walk into the rink, I had like 40 hockey guys warming up, getting off the ice or getting on the ice. 
Um, and I, I, I mean, I know I, I heard a lot of stuff, but it also, you know, it basically just, I guess it made me, you know, ignore them. And I really like, it's, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I, but of I, course it wasn't right, you know, of course it's yeah, not right, and I hope this has, this has changed. But at the time, for me, it was just normal. I mean, I, I didn't expect anything else, which is, yeah. which is not healthy either, but... Yeah, of course. It is. It is, it is uh, I mean, it's the experience when we're growing up, or there's always this kind of like little discrimination, bullying, but uh, I feel in general, would you say both of you Choosing figure skating, it has helped you in your life in in being open about your, your and being like completely comfortable around your circle as well, and um, because it's in the end it's a sport that in general it's very accepting. Although not everybody is out and speaking about it, uh, there's a lot of things that have to improve, but. Uh, how is your experience, will you say, with figure skating is a positive outcome? Mm, me, I think, well, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but I think the, the sport, like whatever, it's, it's zero problem. Because me, and I think a lot of people, I prefer to do something exceptional than the random thing that everyone is doing. And I don't think... I really don't think, even in some places like, I don't know, like you talk about South Asia, in Malaysia, where you, you train and it's like, uh, you know, it's uh, something exceptional. Like if you're a boy and you skate, I think uh, people are more, uh, uh, think it's exceptional, so, so it's better. I, I don't really agree to the reduction of, you know, skating, it's for girls. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's still like that. It's, yes, it's true that, you, you have to assume the, what you do. And if, I don't know, my 15 person of people is doing football, I'm proud to do an, not the same like everyone. I think uh, you, and in life in general, it's, I think I would say to, to, to everyone to say, okay, being different, it's much more interesting than being like everyone on the- True. Like and that doesn't, that doesn't- go with your sexuality of course not uh, but it's um, for a lot of people um, I feel um, when you f focus on figure skating and you know you're going to school and all that uh, but you really don't li try to not listen and focus on your career it becomes figure skating becomes your like safe space I would say it's your sport that you choose and Personally, I have not felt any homophobia or things like that in the skating world or international level. And I feel it's a positive um, outcome that uh, figure skating is, we are very open in our circles, I would say, and uh, even at the international level in general, but there is still a lot of things happening and could improve and to help each other, uh, but yeah, just wanted to hear your experience on uh, on the figure on figure skating, you know, and and Jamal, I don't know if in your case as well, it did how was did it help you as well? I th I, I mean I, I agree with what Roman said. At the same time, also what, what you said, yes, it can become like a safe space because. I mean, after all, as you said, it's a sport, it's an artistic sport where, you know, people are more open. At the same time, I spent more time in the rink and training than at school or playing with my friends anyway. So, True. You know, you, as, 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 as most of the skaters, once you get that deep into it, then you, have, you, you just train anyway and you basically live your life in that world, which I do think is a, a privileged world um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a homosexual to, to grow up in because, and that's, that always depends, it's relative to where you come from, right? Again, mm -hmm. I, I really like, I lived my entire childhood as the only figure skating boy in the capital of ice hockey. Um, so for me, it was, of course, when I went to a figure skating competition, when I went to, of course, I felt less threatened or less, 
I didn't have to eat that careful, you know. That was that was that, that was very it was just very normal for me. Yeah. But to stay, to stay, sorry, to I rebound on what you said, but to <laughs> also, sorry, uh, Javier, if you, <laughs> you can leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but to stay also, you know, the skate, me, it was personally, you know, what I lived uh, more as a skater, a coach, I was older, but it's, I, I felt a bit, not about being gay or whatever, but about the, the community of comfort, blah, blah, blah. Me, it was the opposite. When I was young, I always felt, I always wanted to do not stay all the time in, in this environment because we know that, of course, in figure skating, there, there, there is coaching, but there is a lot of choreography. It has always been a, a very open environment for gay people or different people or crazy people or whoever, you know, it's an artist. It's yeah. the same, uh, I don't know, I imagine in uh, modeling in Hollywood, whatever. But me, I think it's inter we we have to. Me, I was always more interesting to go outside to have friends who didn't know anything about skating. And some of my friends, at the beginning, they they knew I was a skater. Maybe six months after, you know, it, you, we don't have to close the, that. Like, you know, yeah, for, I, I speak for a, maybe for a young skater or someone, of course. But it's not like. But I think one thing doesn't have to exclude the other, you know. I I I, I get what you mean. As a, if you come from a, if you come from a, a place where you maybe don't feel so safe, then yes, yeah. the, the the figure skating environment can provide this safe space for you. That doesn't mean that you that you only that your only friends are skaters. I mean, I had my mm -hmm. my best friends. They're not, none of them are skaters, basically from school and. Uh, but it's still it's no still but it's different. easier when you when you just have skaters around you it's a of bit course. easier when you have a, another girlfriend blah, 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 and she has a friend and a football player and i think it's i don't know like, at the end the sexuality is n nothing with a, yeah. it's sure. about the people you meet about what they do about okay you are gay they don't accept you know if they are not fine you are not fine with them and that's life also, you have to learn yes. life, and life is not easy all the time. I, I agree, but I, I, I feel like you're very much, <laughs> like we're getting into an argument now. No, but you're, I mean, you're, and I totally agree with you, but I think we're both people that have very strong characters that know what they want, that will not let anyone bully us. What, what I, I know that not everybody is like that. And I think the problem that still exists in a lot of places is that people who are not like you, people who maybe are a bit more the followers, people who are more vulnerable, they get still bullied and they, they you know. Yeah, they and there's, a, different, and there's a lot of different stories. And of course, it is growing up, there is also the family support. Not everybody is lucky like we and they have their support. Or even at, depends where you come from, what country. Maybe you're not able even to share it with your closest circle and because you're afraid so and i feel it is not that talking that just because you want to say you're gay or openly or whatever is the news you know it's more about um the story and how how you overcome all these obstacles and also uh feeling that support for other skaters that they don't have the same situation and that they probably they, they don't feel comfortable because they don't have examples or role models right of other figure skaters and uh of course in the end it's not about the sexuality it, and that's what we also try to talk about is because choosing figure skating it shouldn't be about because if you do it it's just a sports for girls you know it should be because it's a beautiful sport and you're choosing and you're good at that, no? And and that's what it makes that makes us get to the top of the level because we focus on um, on our sport that we love so much and we uh, we try to be our best and and it in trying to not be uh, how will you say stopped by these barriers of 
people that may say what may they may say about you or what you know some people that try to make your life difficult uh but in the end i feel when you reach the in in general when we've reached the, the high level of our sport we get into this good environment training with other athletes of high high level and it's it's a different total different situation um and also maybe changing countries for example Guillaume moving to Montreal and being training and focus on that then he he's a total different person he's, he feels a different in a different situation uh surrounded by other ice dancers and in another country feeling more comfortable so so yeah it's about our stories and um I mean, of course, I think it's very important your very important your visions uh, as coach, choreographer, and also part of the Ice Academy, which is also part of the values that I wanted to ask you. That uh, in general is about being working as a team and supporting one another. And I think it, you guys are a, a very good example. And I would like to hear uh, what are your your perspective on this because you have such a great and big team that it's not just about training or coaching you in the end support your athletes in different periods of their lives and struggles so you end up becoming like a family yeah it, 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 yeah it's true as uh, every coach who, who would say the same that but you you and you were an athlete, so you know what coach have done with you in every, every uh, area of your life to make your your uh, your your performance the best. So as coach, we did with every every. I can read. Uh, I, I could write a lot of books of a lot of things I manage, and it's not a, it's not a, only the sexuality. It's a lot. It's life, like you know. Yeah, you, it's life. Yeah. You and, uh, and of course, you, you train kids, and after they become um, adults, and when you, it's the case, uh, for example, for, Gu for with Guillaume, I started to work with um, from, yeah, from Guillaume him. since young, and now he's a man, and he's, he's who he is, and, uh, and I was, uh, yeah, I was, I, I never realized, because me, you know, I'm teaching, I'm skating, it's true that, it's true, there is an education, but it's not the main goal, it's, you have to educate and you have the value, everything, but the goal is, my goal is to, to, to make champion. But uh, I, I realized when, uh, when Guillaume wrote his article, on, when he came out officially um, in the French newspaper and he talked about me and he said, yes, I had my coach, Romain, he's gay. And for me, it was, he always, he was a big help for me to, to, to grow as gay, to go out. And I, I, I realized like, when I re read it that yeah, you didn't realize before. And no, because better. basically I don't care. Huh? You exaggerate, but it's not like I don't do that. I don't do my work to, to, to raise children. You know, it's what you do a bit, but it's not the goal. And I don't do it for that. But you realize that uh, well, me, I was very pleased to read the, but, I mean, the word he said about me. Yeah. You as a coach living your life. Uh, openly with your partner, your husband, and being comfortable and open in your circle, you yes. don't realize, but that helps, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because imagine you were gay, but you, even up to your age, you were not open about it because you are afraid of, you know, what may happen. And this, the, some people are struggling with this. So I think you don't realize sometimes, but you are also a role model as a coach, not just obviously for, for this, but in no, everything, course. as you say, you as a coach, coach helps not just for training, but also in everything in life. And, and uh, Guillaume, Gabriel, and all, all your students in different times that maybe they struggle. Mm -hmm. No, abs absolutely. It's true, but it's true for a lot of people. Like, you know, the coach, the teacher, could be a teacher at school, could be a coach, could be a parent, could be an uncle, could be a, an actor. Uh, so after, it's, it's also up to the, 
to everyone to choose the 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 role model he wants and where he, he wants to go at the end but it's true if you are not very lucky and if you don't have that role model close to you it's it may be more difficult that yeah. i realize and it's true that to to come back on your point it's easier in our world of figure skating than when you are a hockey player or it's a, Football I guess that, for that, sure. Fact. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, so yeah. You guys, um, you Jamal are working for the Ice Academy as well. You run, you know, the social media stuff, and um, so you guys are living right now in Montreal, working as a team, and um, going to the part of the. Um, expectations of what's going to happen in this next season what, how do you how do you see the situation right now that we are living in moving forward <laughs> it's, a, it's very it's a very difficult question um yeah so yeah we, it's good you clarified that because i saw i think some people thought i was teaching as well i do not teach especially not ice no, you have I'm no working. clue <laughs> Um, so I'm working in the office in uh, in the management and also social media and it, that's actually uh, a lot of my work that I was doing also during quarantine was exactly trying to look forward and trying to anticipate what is going to happen. It was uh, it was quite frustrating because you know uh, we still don't know um, things change all the time. Uh, we were. Montreal was one of the last cities in the world, I think, to open their ice rinks. Yeah. Um, they're open now. Uh, infection numbers go up in a lot of countries again. Uh, travel restrictions, we don't know what's going to happen. So basically what we have been doing was really um, try to put a plan in place with basically just contingency plans. So it's, okay, what are we going to do if by then this happens? What are we going to do next and then next and then next? Because the only thing that is certain right now is uncertainty, uncertainty. So Yeah, so you just got to be ready for whatever caps, basically. Exactly. For every scenario. And just take it day by day. I mean, in the end, everybody, everybody is in the same situation. I think the most important right now It's obviously that uh, they're back on ice, they're doing their choreographies, so the skaters will be ready, and the school will, the, the, the academy will do what, what, what it has to, um, according to what's going to happen with the uh, yeah, world. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it was really good to, to have a good perspective of a little bit your personal stories, which helps a lot of people, sometimes even we don't know and also how you guys work as a team with all the other coaches and how you are you guys are a great example of how how big the family has become and that's something that you guys are doing good of course uh in, in all the aspects and i feel it's it goes also to to outside of the skating to our lives and how you support each other and Uh, how you as a coach and part of the team as well, Jamal, it's it's very helpful for your athletes and as role models. So, yeah, I am really happy that you guys were here today sharing your story. It's uh, very great to see you as well. And I hope I come around Montreal and I see you. <laughs> yes, please. <soon. laughs> if, we, if we come back to normality soon. Uh, but, I, I mean... Um, Yeah, um, if you want to say something to the people who's watching and, and following today, go ahead. Well, thank you, everyone, and particularly you, Javier, for what you do. And I think it's, it's, it's good to, to, I don't know, to have a, the, the, that you give a chance to, 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 to people to hear the voice from our world and the different perspective. And I think you, you really, There is a lot of example in our small world who can, yes, with different experience and the different point of view. And uh, it can, uh, if it can help some young kids and even more adults, it's, it's very nice. 
to do that. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very thanks to you guys. I think even if you don't realize it, you guys be living your life openly and even just sharing in your social media picture here and there. It is very important because um, people see it and it normalized with what sometimes people think it is not normal. And that's why sometimes we don't realize that is talking about it is sometimes unnecessary, but I feel it, it was very good that we had this chat and we could hear and get to know you better, which I didn't even know that much of your story either. So it is, it is very great, um, but yeah. So take care, stay motivated. I hope the trainings go well. I see you guys are so busy. So, I mean, as long as you guys can get enough ice, I, I'm sure you're gonna be, be ready. It's not a problem in, in this country to- <laughs> I know. Bring us, you know. Well, it is difficult still, but I mean, of course, it, ice rinks, they have enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Take care, both of you, and thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Javi. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.